Your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment to moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you wanna wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you do that. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity formulations, we can help help you understand how the longevity products work, how nutrition works, how you can use the longevity products to deal with your health challenges. If you have questions about our True Skin Health products or comments or success stories you'd like to share, 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We've got blog posts as well as news stories and all the longevity products at pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and brightsideben.com. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business right off your home office or mileage or stamps, and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program while you're starting your own business, all for a one-time $25 fee. You can sign up off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 if you want more information or if you want to purchase the longevity products or if you just want to sign up. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. I'd also like to remind you to check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar magazine, and our Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream, all made with generous, loaded, packed amounts of fat soluble premium vitamin C, as well as 5% retinol in our retinol 5% gel. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We've been talking about the thyroid gland, two little chunks of butterfly-shaped tissue right in the right around your neck area. And the thyroid glands are linked to the adrenal glands. We call this the adrenal thyroid axis. We said that hypothyroidism poorly functioning thyroid is one of those health challenges, like most health, uh, most health challenges, most health issues, that medicine is absolutely helpless to treat, absolutely helpless to deal with. And the main reason why there's nothing the doctor can do to treat a thyroid gland directly is because the thyroid is responsive to the adrenal glands. 
Actually, there's two types of hypothyroidism, two reasons why the thyroid gland doesn't function as it should. One is said to be primary, primary hypothyroidism, and this is the result of an immune system attack on the thyroid or autoimmune attack on the thyroid. It's called Hashimoto's thyroid, and it always follows blood toxicity. We always say all disease is cell disease. There's no real hypothyroidism as much as there's poorly functioning thyroid cells, and all cell disease is preceded by dirty blood, by blood toxicity. And blood toxicity, unless you're shooting things in through your skin, through uh, I, intravenously, if you're shooting in drugs or getting vaccines perhaps, blood toxicity is always going to be the result of digestive distress or so-called leaky gut syndrome. So you got two types of hypothyroidism. Primary hypothyroidism, that's the result of an autoimmune attack which follows leaky gut syndrome. And then the other cause of hypothyroidism is secondary hypothyroidism, and this is secondary to adrenal gland dysfunction. And in fact, whether the immune system is involved or not, whether it's primary hypothyroidism or secondary hypothyroidism, you're always gonna have some degree of adrenal weakness or adrenal fatigue if your thyroid isn't functioning correctly. And adrenal fatigue, adrenal weakness, is quite common. There's no real numbers on it. Nobody's really done any research to know how many people have this issue. But it's really, really common in my experience. If uh, the adrenal glands are, are two little chunks of tissue, very tiny, they're each each adrenal gland. You have one adrenal gland sitting on top of each kidney, and each adrenal gland, this triangular little piece of tissue, weighs as much as maybe two pennies, less than two pennies, about four grams. Pennies about two and a half grams. So it's a, less than two pennies each one of these things weighs, but they are fundamentally important to how uh, how well the body performs. The adrenal glands are intimately connected to the brain by the hormone, by the, the nervous system and the hormone system, by a, a super highway of nerves and hormones that's called the HPA axis. And this HPA axis communicates to the adrenal glands, sends messages to the adrenal glands from the brain, specifically from the hypothalamus. That's a part of the brain that's in the middle of the brain, and the hypothalamus regulates pretty much everything that goes on in the body from breathing to appetite to temperature control to hormone secretion and that means that when the HPA axis is communicating to the adrenal glands pretty much every single function in the body is going to be affected messages from this HPA axis to the adrenal gland affect temperature regulation how we digest our food how well our immune system is functioning what our skin is going to look like our mood our sex drive and most importantly messages from this HPA axis this brain center the, uh, this brain center to the adrenal glands is going to affect our stress management system. So the brain perceives stuff in the environment. When the brain perceives an, uh, an emergency, whether it's a real emergency that's coming in from the outside, or whether it's a, a, a perceived emergency, an imagined emergency that's coming in from our thoughts or from our feelings, whether that emergency is coming in through our eyes or, or through our ears or perhaps from our, or from our other senses, or whether that emergency is imagined generated through th thoughts, and, um, thoughts and feelings, thoughts and emotions, signals are going to sent to the, be sent to the adrenal glands, and this will ultimately cause a chemical called cortisol to enter into the blood. So the brain perceives a stress, real or imagined, sends a message to the adrenal glands, the adrenal glands secrete cortisol. And this whole line of communication from the brain to the adrenal glands to the cortisol that gets secreted in the blood is what we mean when we say the HP axis or the HPA axis, some people will call it, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, the HPA axis. The secretion of cortisol then is going to raise your blood pressure, it's going to redirect blood flow from the skin and the digestive system and other internal organs, the liver and the spleen, towards the muscles so the body can get out of a jam. So you get a survival threat, and we respond to the survival threat by fighting or fleeing, fl uh, fight or flight. It also, very interestingly, cortisol secretion will also increase blood sugar levels, and in the long run, this can result in diabetes. So HPA axis activity, stimulation from the brain to the adrenals, can cause the secretion of stress hormone, cortisol. This can mess up our blood sugar, and ultimately, this can be, uh, this can be one of the causes of um, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, and ultimately diabetes. You could see the disaster that could be wreaked upon the body via this whole HPA axis and stress response. All right, 
844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information right after this. Right side, I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. If you tried to call in in the past and gotten our busy signal, now's the time to call in, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the thyroid, the adrenal glands, hypothyroidism, you or a loved one may be dealing with any health challenge, you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls in the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please head to my website's brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products off the website's websites, or you can also, if you so desire, sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can join me in my mission to help educate the world about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can help spread the word and make money at the same time. 844-236, I'm sorry, 866-735-2470. It's 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Bright Side Ben team, or you can sign up right off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or Critical Health News. Dot com. Okay, we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in our next segment. We're talking hypothyroidism and how hypothyroidism, the, the functioning of the thyroid, relates to the adrenal glands. In fact, there's two reasons why the thyroid will slow down, hypo, become hypothyroid. Number one is because of uh, uh, autoimmune attacks, so-called primary hypothyroidism. The second reason is a secondary reason, and it follows adrenal fatigue. And this all has to do with how the brain communicates stress messages to the adrenal glands and initiates a whole stress response. This stress response, as we said before, we went to break and increase blood sugar levels. In the long run, this can throw off, uh, throw off how our body processes sugar, leads to diabetes. And in fact, it's this chronic activation via the brain, chronic activation of the adrenals via the brain, uh, and, and the whole stress response and the way the stress response messes up our blood sugar, it, this is the reason or the main reason why many people find that dietary strategies alone don't address their blood sugar issues. If you've been diagnosed as a diabetic or you find that your blood sugar, you're, te you're testing your blood sugar and it remains high and you're still staying away from sweets and you're staying away from your carbs, but you just can't seem to get your blood sugar under control, the chances are pretty good you're dealing with this whole activated HPA axis phenomena. The chances are pretty good that you're dealing with a long-term chronic day-to-day -day activation of the, of the adrenal glands, long-term chronic stress response. And likewise, uh, the same is true if you're one of those folks that just can't seem to lose the weight. If you're dieting and you're exercising and you're using your mighty 90 essential nutrients, but you're still having problems dropping your pounds, or if you've dropped pounds, but you seem to have plateaued. If you've dropped your 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds, but you've got another 100 pounds to go and you can't seem to lose any more weight, you can blame the stress response. You can blame the HPA axis. You can blame the sugar-releasing effect of the stress hormone cortisol. This is the hidden, a hidden cause of diabetes and a hidden cause of plateau, plateaus when you're trying to lose weight, a hidden cause of uh, blood sugar that seems to stay elevated even though you're doing all the things you think you're supposed to do. Probably you got something going on in the adrenal glands. Probably you've got some kind of chronic long-term stress issue. And remember, long-term stress issues don't have to be physiological. They can also be psychological, and they don't have to be psychological. They can be physiological. If you have some kind of infl inflammation that's going on, that can create a stress response. If you've got some kind of immune activity, that can create a stress response. In any case, the net effect of adrenal activation and 
a stimulated HPA axis in addition to high and then low blood sugar because high blood sugar always leads to low blood sugar goes up and down and low blood sugar will eventually lead to high blood sugar via this the stress response so I call it the high blood sugar low blood sugar roller coaster the net effect of adrenal activation and the high blood sugar low blood sugar roller coaster is going to be an increase in blood pressure and a slowdown in functions that are not involved in emergencies, not involved in survival threats. So that when, the, when cortisol goes up, functions in the body that are not considered critical for survival, such as immune system functioning, will become suppressed. Digestive system functioning will become suppressed. Libido and fertility will become suppressed. Growth and repair will slow down. All of the things we love about life will slow down when the body thinks that there's some kind of emergency. And in this way, adrenal activation and the secretion of cortisol play a very important role in keeping us alive under emergency conditions, but they also keep us from being able to thrive. Yes, survival is important, but what ends up happening when we're in chronic survival mode is our thrival suffers. Our ability to grow and repair and anti-age and fight disease, fight cancer. All of these things will become suppressed under conditions of long-term chronic survival activation. And it's this reallocation and redirection of resources away from systems in the body that are important for long-term thriving by the way, this is especially relevant in terms of the immune system as well as growth and repair. And in this way, chronic activation of cortisol plays a major role in the development of diseases. In fact, I would say it plays the major role in the development of, in the development of diseases, and that's why it's the third point on our triangle of disease. And that includes cancer, and that includes heart disease, the two leading causes of death. The best way to reduce your odds of getting cancer, the best way to reduce your risks of heart disease is to stabilize the adrenal glands, is to calm the body down, is to use all of your relaxation techniques. Relaxation is not some kind of airy-fairy health strategy from Boulder, Colorado. Relaxation is a critical part of telling the uh, HPA axis the cortisol system, the stress management system to stand down so the body can redirect its resources back to thriving, back to fighting diseases, back to strengthening the immune system, back to growth and repair, back to anti-aging. And this problem, this adrenal stress problem, is made worse by the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster. Hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, then hypoglycemia, then hyperglycemia, high blood sugar, low blood sugar, high blood sugar, low blood sugar. That makes the stress system, that, that puts more of a burden on the stress system. Nutritional deficiencies, more burden on the stress system. This is the standard American diet and the standard American lifestyle. Hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, nutritional deficiency, stress. We're not sick because we're missing medicine. There's nothing a doctor can do to, uh, to calm the body down. There's nothing a doctor can do to stabilize our blood sugar. There's nothing a doctor can do to lower the, the stimulation from the brain to the adrenal glands. In fact, anything the doctor can do is going to make things worse. When the adrenal glands are chronically activated and burdened by malnourishment, by messed up blood sugar, eventually two very important health suppressant negative health effects are going to occur. First of all, the adrenal glands will become fatigued and they're not going to function as they should. They're going to become less sensitive to signals coming from the brain. They're going to run out of resources, especially zinc and vitamin C. They're going to run out of cholesterol. Yes, the adrenal glands will run out of cholesterol, and that means your body's going to make more cholesterol, which is a whole other issue. We'll continue this discussion on our next Bright Side episode. When we come back, we'll take your phone calls, 844-236-6010. Got lines open for you, 844-236-6010. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. Side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, hypothyroidism, if you have adrenal fatigue issues, tomorrow we'll talk about chronic fatigue and adrenal fatigue issues. Chronic fatigue is another one of those mysterious health challenge challenges that doctors are flummoxed about, seem to have no idea how to deal with. A lot of times I'll tell you it's psychosomatic. It is not psychosomatic. Chronic fatigue issues are 
a direct result of a burdened, stressed out adrenal system. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking adrenals and thyroid and HPA axis and the stress response and blood sugar issues. All, it all boils down to this triangle of disease, the blood sugar, uh, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. And make no mistake about it, if you are dealing with a long-term chronic health challenge, you've got to backtrack to this stress management system, the blood sugar system, and the digestive system, the triangle of disease, as I like to call it. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'll get your calls here momentarily. From the journal Food Chemistry, Mushrooms are full of antioxidants that have anti-aging potential. Mushrooms may contain unusually high amounts of two antioxidants that some scientists suggest could help fight aging and bolster health, according to a team of Penn State researchers in the study. Researchers found that mushrooms contain high amounts of something called ergothionine, which is sort of similar to vitamin D, and glutathione, which is the body's most important disease fighter. You'll get both of those in, high, uh, in abundant amounts in mushrooms, according to Robert Bielman, Professor Emeritus of Food Science and Director of the Penn State Center for Plant and Mushroom Products for Health. Dr. Bielman added that researchers also found that the amounts of these two compounds vary between mushroom species. The point is mushrooms are kind of a cross between the uh, meat world, the animal world, and the, veg the vegetable kingdom. So if you're a vegetarian, mushrooms are an ideal way to get certain nutrients that you can't get in vegetables and that you can otherwise only find in animal products, especially vitamin D. Also, you'll get some vitamin A in mushrooms. You'll get lots of good fiber and lots of protein in mushrooms, and you'll also get glutathione. Glutathione is an absolutely critical, amazing, super vital, a super a, a vitally important antioxidant, especially if you're dealing with immune system disorders. According to Dr. Bielman, uh, glutathione is associated, or glutath low glutathione levels are associated with diseases of aging like cancer, coronary heart disease, and Alzheimer's. You might add Parkinson's disease to the list. I like intravenous glutathione. If you could find some IV glutathione, if you're dealing with movement disorders, brain health issues, cancer, if you're dealing with any health challenges, IV glutathione can be really helpful. In fact, IV nutrition is it's just really amazing stuff. If, as far as Obamacare goes and national health care goes, nationalized health care goes, having the government pay for health care, we'd be much better off paying for intravenous nutrition uh, than we'd be than paying for drugs and surgical procedures. And there's times, of course, you need surgical procedures, but to pay for long-term chronic statin drugs and, and antihypertensive drugs and beta blockers before we pay for intravenous nutrition as a country doesn't make sense to me and is probably more about funding drug companies companies than it is about anything else. Speaking of funding drug companies, I don't know if you read this today, President Trump has chosen a guy named Dr. Scott Gottlieb, who is a so-called drug expert with deep ties to the pharmaceutical industry, to uh, lead the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. How do you like that? The drug industry now has their own representative as the head of the FDA. So much for draining the swamp. Did anybody out there really think that Donald Trump was going to be any different than anybody else? It turns out he's a lot worse. This guy Gottlieb, well known on Capitol Hill as a, as a uh, spokesperson for all kinds of pharmaceutical issues, testifying on drug, pro drug pricing and uh, viewed favorably by drug companies and pharmaceutical investors. He's on the board of GlaxoSmithKline, one of the biggest drug companies in the world. Uh, he's an advisor to, I should say, to GlaxoSmithKline. He sits on the boards of other drug companies and biotech companies. And now he's going to head the FDA. Lovely. You guys, we've got to take the bull by the horns. You cannot expect the government. You cannot expect the FDA. You cannot expect the medical model to address our health challenges. And it's not the government's role to help address our health challenges. We're asking them to do something they're not supposed to be doing. It's our business dealing with health challenges. And that's why getting on a supplement program is not optional if you're dealing with some kind of health issue. It's not an option. You have to get on a nutritional supplement program. And the longevity supplements are so easy to use. They're effective. They're powerful. They're relatively inexpensive. You could probably get them cheaper. All the things that you get in the longevity products, you could probably get them cheaper if you want to put it, get on the internet and go shopping and figure out all the things that you need. But why? You'll get your healthy start pack every month for 120 bucks. For an extra 25 dollars, you'll get your products wholesale price. You can start a business. You can help spread the word. If you're dealing with a health challenge, or if you don't want to be dealing with a health challenge, 
getting on a nutritional supplement program is, in my opinion, not an option. All right, from Tulane University, low-fat diet, low-carb diet, or low-both? Hmm. Low-carb diets are often thought of as fad diets that might yield a rapid initial weight loss but aren't sustainable or, national, or, or necessarily healthy. But it turns out, according to Tulane University, a low-carbohydrate diet is more effective for losing weight and for lowering a heart disease risk than a low-fat diet. Interesting, because we've all been told we're supposed to keep a fat out of our diet, and it's really about fat, not about sugar. Well, if you've been listening to this program, you know it's about the carbohydrates. It's about the sugar. The ketogenic diet has repeatedly been shown to be the most healthy diet you can live on, and it's a high-fat diet, at least high percentage of our calories coming from fat. Remember, if you're, doing, uh, if you're going ketogenic, it's not just high fat. It's high fat slash low carb slash low calorie. And remember, protein gets turned into fat. Protein first will get turned into sugar and then into fat. So if you're trying to, uh, if you're trying to leverage the ketogenic diet, but you're eating too much protein, and by too much I'm eating, I mean you're eating more protein than your body is using. In other words, you're eating lots of meat or lots of protein, getting lots of eggs or fish or protein, uh, protein powders, but you're not working out and your body's not using that protein for muscle or for growth and repair, what's going to end up happening is that protein is going to get turned into sugar. It's going to raise your blood sugar. And that means it's going to mess up your, your blood sugar profile if you're diabetic. Yes, protein can mess up your blood sugar profile if you're diabetic, just like stress. In fact, stress and too much protein are two hidden causes of dysglycemia or messed up blood sugar. And not only that, but eventually that protein is going to get turned into body fat if you're not using it. So if you're going to eat your protein, you're going to eat lots of meat, and you're going to eat lots of fish, and you're going to use your protein powder, make sure you're getting your butt in the gym, or at least working out out of the home. You don't need to go to the gym. You know, just jogging in your living room is a great way to get some aerobic exercise and eventually even some muscle building exercise if you do it long enough. Just jogging around your couch. Just sitting and standing, sitting and standing, sitting, uh, raising your body up from a seated position to a standing position super slowly is a great way to build your glutes, your hamstrings, the back of your legs, and your butt muscles. Just rising up from a seated position slowly and then going back down to a seated position super slowly. If you want to max out or get extra exercise, hold a couple of uh, gallons of water, gallon jugs of water as you're standing and as you're sitting. One of the best investments you can make for a home workout is one of those heavy duty rubber bands. You can get a great leg workout. You can get a great bicep workout. You can get a great abdominal workout with those heavy duty rubber bands. Invest in five pound dumbbells. You can get great workouts with five pound dumbbells right out of your home, right out of the comfort of your living room. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844. 844- 236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Farm Spenny. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're dealing with a health challenge you or a loved one is just absolutely frustrated with, your doctor can't help you, we are here for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. There's no such thing as a chronic, long-term, progressive degenerative disease, which make up 80% of our health care challenges in this country, that is not reversible. Not, I'm not talking cure here, folks. I'm talking reversible. Cure is about magic. Reversal is about science. Your doctor will say, oh, there's no cure for that disease, and he's right, because it's not about magic. It's about reversal. And if your doctor can't figure out how to reverse your chronic long-term degenerative disease, he needs to go back to biochemistry 101, because all diseases are based in biochemistry, and all all progressive degenerative diseases are reversible by understanding the biochemical basis of that disease. And it's always uh, always going to involve the three points on our triangle, the digestive system, the blood sugar system, the adrenal thyroid complex, as well as dirty blood and cell toxicity, or I should say cell breakdown. Cell breakdown itself is a result of three things, starvation, suffocation, and toxification, nutritional deficiencies, lack of oxygen, and toxicity. The point about all of this is that none of it involves medicine. None of it involves the medical model. It's all, it all involves things that we can do out of the comfort of our own living room. Reversal is about r- r- things that we can do via our lifestyle choices. Health is simple, you guys. It's not complicated. 
and reversal is as inevitable as disease. Reversal is as inevitable as disease in the sense that reversal will always follow correcting digestive issues, blood sugar issues, and relaxing the body. And disease is always inevitable when the body is toxic, when the body is suffocated, when the body is dealing with nutritional deficiencies. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. And we do have lines open, by the way, 844-236-6010. Let's say good morning to John in Kansas. How you doing, John? What's up, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. Uh, dealing with uh, long-term after effects of uh, surgery on my left foot for uh, plantar fasciitis before I knew not to do that. Okay. I uh, guess uh, hindsight, 2020. When and, did you? Uh, when did you have your? Uh, about twelve years ago. Twelve years ago. Yeah. And, and you're I still, still dealing have, with uh, it. My my left calf is probably at least fifty percent larger, uh, more swollen than my right calf. After twelve and, years. Uh, have some, yeah. After numb, uh, have some numbing and the nerves. Oh my still goodness. Haven't growing back and. Oh my uh, goodness. How old are you, John? I'm uh, uh, sixty-four. That's terrible. Now, do you have any other health challenges? That's the first thing I would ask you. You know, I got rid of a lot of it. Uh, went to gluten-free, grain-free about uh, four and a half years ago. Lost eighty-seven pounds. Oh my gosh! What, what are your what were your health challenges? Diabetes, probably blood uh, sugar problem. No, actually, it didn't have diabetes. I was checked for that. Didn't have that. Well, so there's that, that alone. Tell well, hang on, just one moment. That the fact that you had you were eighty-seven pounds overweight, or maybe more overweight, uh, and your body was in that kind of dire straits, dire condition, and they told you you weren't diabetic shows you how idiotic blood testing is. Obviously, to anybody who understands biochemistry, you were a big-time diabetic. I always say you had big-time messed up blood sugar. Forget the diagnosis of diabetes that's just some doctor pronouncement but dysglycemia it was was definitely involved and that's i'm not saying that just to be you know to beat up on you or beat up on doctors i'm telling you that's one right. very important point point that you need to address in fact i would venture to say if you're not healing after 12 years that you're still dysglycemic you still have some messed up blood sugar issues so let's let's just let's just show you how all of these problems are related to the same basic things that we talked that we talk about every day on this program well you don't you don't have alzheimer's disease or dementia, you sound really clear-headed, but if you did have right. Alzheimer's disease and dementia, you'd have to do the same thing. I don't know if you have arthritis issues, but if you do, or if you did, if you don't, you, you still have to do the same thing. I'm, I, you're still going to have to do the same thing that I'm telling you about, whether you have it or not. The point I'm making is, no matter what your health challenge is, you still have to do the same things that I'm going to tell you right now, okay? Number one, first and foremost, it's great that you're gluten-free. Congratulations. That's, that's awesome, and, and I think pretty much everybody should be gluten-free, whether you're symptomatic or not. Gluten is just not good stuff. Uh, but you got to do more than that. You've got to look for some kind of digestive distress. Your blood cannot be circulating as poorly as it is unless it's thick and sludgy. And thick and, and by the way, I know your blood is not a circulate, uh, circulating as it should because you said you were swollen in the lower part of your body. That means the circulatory right. system isn't moving like it should. That involves sludginess, and that almost always involves some kind of toxicity getting into the blood through a leaky gut, so-called leaky Can gut that syndrome. Can by the, the dysfunctional nerve that was cut? Absolutely. That could also have be involved. Absolutely. But the fact that you're not healing or you're not getting better after 12 years tells me there's something chronically getting in there, something okay. over and over and over. And the fact that you were gluten intolerant also leads, to, leads me to believe you may have some leaky gut issues. So focus on the gut and you'll know, not just for John here, any, everybody listening, you'll know you have a digestive problem if you feel better when you stop eating for a couple of days. Sometimes you'll feel better when you stop eating for an hour or two hours or five hours. But if you stop eating for three days or, or two or three days or you do a swerophy cleanse and you notice you're feeling more energy, you're feeling better, chances are really good that you had some kind of food issue. So fasting for a couple of days, it's always a good idea to fast per periodically to intermittently fast. But especially if you're dealing with a health challenge, lay off a of food for two or three days. Do a swerovy cleanse. Get yourself, uh, call Longevity. Call 866-735-2470. Uh, Tell them you want to buy some Swero V. You do half a 
bottle of Swero V every hour for two or three days. And when you start eating again, you look for problem foods. Eat your favorite foods for a day and then see what happens. Do you have, are you bloated? Are you discomfort? Do you have any discomfort? Are you constipated? Do you have any uh, mental issues like brain fog issues, uh, skin issues? Any kind of bodily problem that's associated or linked to specific foods tells you you got to lay off of that food. Once you have established a list of foods that are so-called bad foods for you, then you're going to start patching up the gut using your nightly essence, apple cider vinegar, digestive enzymes. In fact, I would be using uh, John digestive enzymes on an empty stomach if I were you, just taking digestive enzymes okay. in the middle of the day. That can help thin the blood. Uh, the, the nightly essence also contains something called natokinase, which can help thin the blood for you a little bit. Uh, make sure you're keeping your blood sugar as stable as you can, laying off foods that spike your blood sugar and using your Sweeties and your Ultimate Niacin and your Ultimate Selenium in addition to the Beyond Tangy Tangerine and the Ultimate EFAs. In fact, I would just get on the Healthy Start Pack if I were you. The Fucoid Z will act to help thin your blood a little bit. Um, that's, that can also be helpful. Get on, uh, try see if you can get 400 international units of vitamin E every day. That has a wonderful blood thinning effect. Are you exercising at all, John? Can you uh, exercise? A body, a vibe What's body that? and a, uh, um, a mini trampoline. The, oh, beautiful. Uh, the beautiful, Do beautiful. Awesome. Keep doing it. If you can hang upside down, if you can find an inversion device at a gym, that may help you a little bit. And then if you can uh, do anything that will help improve oxygenation, that will help move the, circ move the blood through the circulatory system. Things like a slow, deep breathing, massage, hot water, hot showers. So all of these have vasodilation or blood vessel opening effects, and that can help improve uh, blood flow or, or help uh, uh, keep the blood moving, uh, improve uh, sticky blood problems vasodilation that is, also thinning the blood. Oxygen thins the blood, so deep breathing techniques can help thin the blood for you. And then there are a couple of ec extra nutrients that might be important for helping speed the healing process up. Uh, zinc is absolutely a must-have. And this, by the way, is important for people who are pre-surgery and people who are post-surgery. 50 milligrams of zinc a day. Glucosamine, that is the glucogel caps, maybe six to nine glucogel caps a day. Always use some vitamin C with your glucogel caps or some Beyond tangy tangerine with your glucogel caps. I would be throwing in a little extra high aluronic acid, H-Y-A-L-U-R-O-N-I-C, high aluronic acid, maybe 100 to 200 milligrams a day. You might also want to try some liquid silica gel for all, and this is for everybody post-surgery and everybody pre-surgery too, pre and post-surgery, liquid silica gel. Very important for helping regenerate connective tissue, of course, uh, the fascia the, in, in the plantar area, the foot area, is, uh, is connective tissue, so helping regenerate connective tissue is also going to be important for you. Last but not least, bone soup and bone broth protein. That should be the main, uh, one of your main sources of calories is bone soup, uh, chicken soup, that is, with the bones, and also bone broth protein, which can get you the protein that's found in the bone broth. Bone broth protein is a little different from bone broth. Bone broth has some extra stuff in it. Bone broth protein is the concentrated protein that's found in the bone broth. John, I got to motivate. I hope it helped you out. If you have any more questions, please call us back tomorrow or send an email to ben at ksco.com and make sure you include your phone number in there. Hope we helped you, John. Thank you. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. Don't forget to check out my websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to check out our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. We'll talk to you all later, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now. Thank you.